Let's do an example calculation of the type that you'll need to do for this week's lab. In this problem, we're asked to calculate the percent yield of a reaction if 106.0 grams of sulfur dioxide were produced from the reaction of 78.1 grams of carbon disulfide and 83.8 grams of oxygen. The other product of the reaction was carbon dioxide. So begin with, what is percent yield? Well, percent yield is a way of quantifying how efficient our reaction was is simply the ratio of the actual yield of a product, how much we actually produced experimentally, compared to our theoretical yield, how much we should have been able to produce based upon the amounts of reactants, a ratio times 100%. For problems such as these, we have to be given the actual yield. So this number, 106.0 grams, is the actual yield of our experiment, 106.0 grams of sulfur dioxide. So then our task is to take the information in the problem and to calculate the theoretical yield. How much sulfur dioxide should have we been able to produce from the reaction of 78.1 grams of carbon dioxide and 83.8 grams of oxygen? We start then, if not already given, with an equation, any balance equation. So we have reactant is carbon disulfide. So carbon disulfide means it's going to be CS2 plus oxygen is the other reactant. Remember, oxygen is one of the seven diatomic elements. So in nature, oxygen does not exist as oxygen atoms, where there's oxygen molecules. So not O, but rather O2. The products are sulfur dioxide, which is what we're after. So SO2 for sulfur dioxide. And they were told the other product was carbon dioxide. Now that we have an equation, we want to use this equation to quantify how much product was produced from the given amounts of carbon disulfide and oxygen. So we need a balance equation in order to do so. We have one carbon versus one carbon, two sulfurs versus one sulfur, two oxygens versus four oxygens. So to balance the equation, we need to start by balancing the sulfurs. Do that with two versus one, so I can change this to a two. Now I have two sulfurs, which does match two sulfurs here. The oxygen numbers have updated. I still have two oxygens on the reactant side, but now I have two times two, four, plus two, six oxygens on the product side. Notice that on the reactant side, the oxygens come in pairs. So in order to have six oxygens on the reactant side to match the six oxygens I currently have on the product side, I need to have a total of three pairs. In other words, change that one into a three. Now I have a balanced equation that will allow me to relate quantitatively the amounts of reactants to the amounts of products. From the information of the problem, we're told that we reacted 78.1 grams of carbon disulfide. 78.1 grams of this reactant. Reacted with 83.8 grams of this reactant. And we're asked to determine percent yield. So for that, we need to find the theoretical yield. We need to determine how many grams of sulfur dioxide should have been produced from the reaction of this amount of carbon disulfide with this amount of oxygen. When you're given the amount of both reactants, this is likely going to be a limiting reactant problem, which means that one of these reactants will run out first, and when it runs out, the reaction will stop. Consequently, then the amount of the limiting reactant will control how much product is actually produced. So in order to determine which of these is limiting reactant, one approach we can take is to simply go through stoichiometry and do it twice. First, assume that the first reactant, in this case carbon disulfide, is the limiting reactant. And then from that, calculate how many grams of SO2 we should produce based upon this assumption. So the plan would be go from grams of CS2 to moles of CS2. We always go through moles in stoichiometry. Moles of CS2 to moles of SO2. Then finally, moles of SO2 to grams of SO2. That number then will be the theoretical yield if this assumption is valid. We'll do this calculation, and then we'll do a similar calculation, but this time, assume that the other reactant is limiting, assuming the oxygen is limiting. Otherwise, our plans may be very similar. We'll start with the grams of oxygen that we're given. For that's a moles of oxygen, 
moles of oxygen to moles of SO2. And finally, moles of SO2 to grams of SO2. And then this will be our answer if the oxygen, in fact, is a linear reactant. So in the end, we'll get two grams of SO2. We'll know which one is the correct answer because it's going to be the smaller of the two. And then the other number will have absolutely no meaning to it. So we divert from grams of one substance to grams of a different substance. It's going to take a couple conversions. Grams of CS2 to moles of CS2. Divert from grams of one thing to moles of the same thing. It's always require the molar mass, mm, of CS2. To go from moles of CS2 to moles of SO2, that's going to require the balance equation. While we balance the equation, we realize that according to the balance equation, one mole of CS2 will produce two moles of SO2. And finally, to go from moles of SO2 to grams of SO2, that will require the molar mass of SO2. Likewise, for number two, we have grams of O2 to moles of O2. That's going to require the molar mass of O2. Moles of O2 to moles of SO2 requires the balance equation. Specifically, notice three moles of oxygen are required to produce two moles of SO2. And then finally, moles of SO2, grams of SO2, we use the same molar mass we calculate earlier. So we're now ready to do our calculation. We have 78.1 grams of CS2. We want to convert that into moles of CS2. So that's going to be our molar mass conversion. One mole of CS2 is equivalent to so many grams of CS2, and that's the molar mass. So to find the molar mass of CS2, we need to look at the periodic table and realize that CS2 is composed of one carbon plus two sulfurs. So the molar mass of CS2 would be one times the mass of carbon plus two times the mass of sulfur, or about 76.13 grams. Convert from moles of CS2 to moles of SO2. One mole of CS2 produces two moles of SO2. So one mole of CS2 produces two moles of SO2. And finally, convert from moles of SO2 to grams of SO2. One mole of SO2. And it's molar mass. We have SO2 is composed of one sulfur plus two oxygens. So the molar mass of SO2 would then simply be the mass of one sulfur, 32.06, plus two oxygens, two times 16, for a total mass of 64.06. We do this calculation, notice that all the units will cancel, except for grams of SO2. As I said before, will be our answer if this assumption is valid. So we do our calculation, 78.1, times 2 times 64.06 divided by 76.13 divided by 1 divided by 1 gives us our theoretical yield if the assumption is correct of about 131.4 grams of SO2, which may or may not be our answer as to what the theoretical yield is of this calculation. But to check to see if it is in fact the correct answer, we need to check the other possible assumption, which is if the CS2 is not limiting, that means that the other reactant is limiting the oxygen. So go through the same process, grams to moles, moles to moles, moles to grams. We have 83.8 grams of oxygen. First convert from grams of oxygen to moles of oxygen using the molar mass of oxygen. So we have then one mole of oxygen. Oxygen, notice, is just composed of two atoms of, of oxygen. So the Molar mass of O2, oxygen gas, is going to be 2 times 16, or 32. To convert from moles of oxygen to moles of SO2, on the balance equation, 3 moles of oxygen produces 2 moles of SO2. So I have 3 moles of oxygen produces 2 moles of SO2. And finally, convert from moles of SO2 to grams of SO2, exactly the same conversion we did earlier, so we can use exactly the same information, which is that one mole of SO2 equivalent to 64.06 grams of SO2. Now we can do our calculation. Notice that all the units will cancel. 
except for grams of SO2. So I have 83.8 times 2 times 64.06 divided by 32 divided by 3 gives us a answer of 111.8 grams of SO2. We'll keep one extra digit as intermediate answer. Now that we have our two numbers, 131.4 grams of SO2 is how much we should produce if the CS2 runs out first, if CS2 is a linear reactant. 111.8 grams of SO2 is how much we should produce, is our theoretical yield if the oxygen is a linear reactant. So I said at the beginning, once we get these two answers, whichever one is smaller is the correct answer because we can't produce 131.4 grams of SO2 if the reaction stops once we've produced 111.8 grams of SO2. So that means this number is our fact, our theoretical yield, which means that this is a valid assumption. That's the correct assumption. If this is the valid assumption, that means this is an invalid assumption. So because this is invalid, this number we calculated has absolutely no practical meaning. So we just calculated just to determine which of these is linear reactant. Now that we know what the true theoretical yield is, we can calculate percent yield as that ratio between how much we actually produced, which we're given this problem as 106.0 grams of SO2, compared to how much we should have been able to produce, which is 111.8 grams of SO2. Notice that in our equation here, when we compare the actual yield to theoretical yield, we have to be comparing apples to apples. It has to be grams of this substance compared to grams of the same substance. I can't compare the grams of SO2 that I actually produced to the grams of, for example, CO2 that I should produce. It has to be grams of SO2 over grams of SO2, or grams of the product one over the grams of the product one. So then finally, percent yield is just simply that ratio times 100%. So we have 106.0 divided by 111.8 times 100 gives us a percent yield of 94.812. And then finally, when we round to the correct number of figures, notice that this number comes from this number, which only has three. So because this number only has three, that limits our final answer also to just three. So we could correctly report our final value as 94.8% yield.